This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Of course, we are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. And of course, I'm Rafael Di Furi and today... We wanted to try and jump into the question, how much do you need to be able to retire to Italy? This question could be answered in a number of different ways because as it kind of comes down, there are really two umbrellas. There's how much do you need to logistically, legally be able to reside in Italy to get a visa if you need one. But then there's also the practical aspect of how much does it actually cost per month? Like what is the cost of living? What are the cost of the things that you'll need in a day-to-day basis? So Marco, maybe let's talk first about the practical aspect before getting into the more kind of legal aspect of living in Italy. Online, I've seen a lot of questions from individuals and in Facebook groups on for expats and so on. Is 5,000 enough to live in Italy per month? Is 3,000 enough to live in Italy per month? Is 2,000 enough to live in Italy per month? What would your opinion be for an individual who wants to retire to Italy? Of course, again, talking about day-to-day needs, like how much is it actually going to cost you? What would you say would be a fair amount for a person to plan for? Of course, the answer depends on a variety of factors, including lifestyle and needs. But in general, I think we can talk in general in this episode, uh, the numbers that you just gave me are high. So the average Italian will be able to just get by with with much less. So when you talk about 5,000, 3,000, I say, again, based on a normal average lifestyle, that's even excessive. So with 2,000 a month, uh, but even less, but let's say 2,000 a month, an average retiree can live comfortably in Italy, including um, rent. If you own a property and the 2000 is excluding the rent, I think that's also considered to be a high amount. Of course, if we're talking about the north of Italy, things are a little bit more expensive. In the south of Italy, things are like the cost of life is less expensive. So 2000 a month in southern Italy, that's, that's a very high sum of money where you can live very comfortably. I would tend to agree with that. I'll admit each time I saw those Facebook posts, there was part of me, maybe all of me, that laughed quite hard when I would see them because at the time I was living on significantly less than that. And I think it is possible to have a comfortable life, maybe not perfect in some aspects, even on, say, in the hundreds of euros per month. And I think that you have to, of course, consider different factors, like you were saying, north versus south, big big city versus small town. There are going to be factors which really play a huge role in it. But what about things like, say, gas for your car or car insurance, things like this? Uh, what would a person really have to expect uh, when it comes to those things on a monthly basis? So, of course, like prices, they have gone up a little bit due to inflation in the recent months, and they're a little bit higher than usual, but it's still, you know, a situation where prices are low compared to many other countries, including the UK or the US. So, to fill up your car, um, if you have an average car, right now with like 80 euros, you can fill up the tank, maybe if it's an SUV, 100 euros so like i said prices have gone up but with 100 euros you can you can fill up the tank of a suv and regarding car insurance well that's also a little bit higher than usual but still low compared to other countries so for a normal car you end up paying in terms of just insurance just to go around with your car about like two three hundred per semester so every six months and of course that's still a lower number than uh, what we have, what we see in other foreign countries. It sounds great. Uh, I mean, that's really quite reasonable when you think about it in in comparison to a lot of places. But then what about things like actually having a home per month or an apartment, purchasing, renting, homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance? What could those types of costs end up looking like at the end of the month? 
So of course, you know, if you're going to move to Italy, you're going to have to buy or rent a property. And again, the answer depends on what you're looking for, but things can be relatively cheap in Italy in comparison to other countries like the US. So in Italy, if you want to buy a small flat for two people, so maybe a two bedrooms flat, if it's not a tourist area, if it's a normal average mid-sized city or a small town uh, in the north of Italy with maybe 70 to 90,000 euros, you can buy a very nice apartment. If it's the south of Italy, even less, maybe 60 to 70,000 euros uh, for a two bedroom apartment. That's very realistic. Prices have gone up a little bit. Uh, so there is a certain, certain percentage that has added to the prices that we had before um, the recent months, but it's still very convenient to purchase a property in Italy. But again, these prices are for an average apartment if you're looking for a single detached house in the north of Italy. Uh, while, say, a few months ago, you could have purchased one for on average, maybe 150 to 180,000 euros. Now we're averaging, I'd say, 180 to 220,000 euros in the north of Italy for a detached house. And of course, you know, the size of the Italian houses are a little bit smaller than uh, the sizes of the American houses. So by detached house, I mean a house with maybe three bedrooms, and two bathrooms, maybe a two floor, two floors property with a backyard and a front yard. Uh, in a residential area and again not in a tourist area or in a famous city like Florence or Milan or Rome in a mid-sized uh, city or small town in the north of Italy whereas in the south of Italy prices are a little bit lower so you can buy a an average detached house in, in a similar situation uh, for maybe 130 to 150,000 and like I said in the south prices are a little bit lower than in the north uh, on average, uh, like I said, of course, if you want a property with lake view or sea view, prices are higher, but still, it's something relatively uh, less expensive uh, by comparison if you think about the same property in the US. Things are different if you have to rent a property because, you know, prices are much lower compared to the US or the UK. So if you're renting a two bedroom apartment in an average mid-sized town or village in Italy, prices could range between 400 and 600 euros per month. Uh, if it's a larger apartment, maybe they can go up to six to 700, 700 per month, but it's normally not more than that for an apartment for rent. It's a little bit unusual in Italy to rent a whole property, but it's we have situations where people want to rent like a detached house and maybe prices there are a little bit higher but not that much higher as one may think so i'd say in general prices in italy for properties are very convenient and and much lower than than the prices that uh, uh people are used to in america or the uk and a number of other foreign countries so if you're looking to buy in italy or even to rent in italy that's definitely a good investment and the cost will be relatively smaller than um, what you would have in countries like the US or the UK. And finally, regarding homeowners insurance, in Italy, I have to say that's pretty rare. So it's not common for homeowners to have an insurance, though, though some, some people do have it. And prices are also relatively low compared to other countries. So we're in the, uh, in the hundreds of euros per year to, for, for a normal average uh insurance that covers your house for fires or for damages floatings and finally also taxes are uh pretty low in italy property taxes so and actually if it's your first house in italy uh you can expect to pay no annual taxes and uh, a reduced two percent one-time property tax whereas if you uh, have multiple houses in italy you could pay uh, a as a tax that is as high as nine percent it's a one-time purchase tax and annual taxes are anyway very low they change depending on the location of the house because they are municipal taxes but they are 
again in the order of the hundreds of euros per year. Interesting. And so since we've spoken so far about the individuals who would be um, wanting to know about just a practical perspective, how much does it cost? What about the other practical perspective, but in a very different sense for um, getting a visa and so on? What would those minimum requirements be? Because what you may need on a day to day basis can really vary greatly from what you may need to be able to prove that you're able to support yourself in the country. So most people who want to retire in Italy will uh, choose the elective residency visa, which is meant for people who want to retire in Italy because it's it's based on passive income. So you need to have passive income to apply for the elective residency visa, also known as the retirement visa. But a person who is retired doesn't have necessarily to apply for this specific visa. They can apply for other visas and still live in Italy as a retiree. But the elective residency visa, like I said, is what normally a retiree would choose. And you have to apply for the elective residency visa through the Italian consulate in your home country. Uh, the application process takes about six months. So if you want to retire in Italy, it's best if you start prepare in advance. And the prerequisite is that you have a house in Italy, a home or a property, an apartment that you rented or that you own. So it's very important that before you start looking into the elective residency visa, you first secure a property in Italy. If it's a property that you rented, you might want to talk to the owner to include a provision in the agreement. Uh, that regulates the agreement in the case of non-approval of the visa. But of course, if you have the if you meet the requirements, there is no need to worry about a potential non-approval. Now, the law states that you have to have at least thirty-one thousand euros per year per person in passive income. So that could come from investment, social security, pensions, uh, anything that doesn't come from work activities. So you cannot apply for the elective residency visa if you have an active uh, position in a company or if you have a managerial position uh, your income needs to come from uh, a passive stream of income and also while you live in italy on the elective residency visa you have to be sure to not work in other words you cannot carry out any work activities uh, in italy for a u.s employer or on your own and also you cannot seek any uh, employment while in italy because you have to support yourself with your passive income now the minimum is thirty-one thousand per year however the consulate has a great discretionary power so to speak when evaluating your uh, income streams so you have to be sure that you show that your income streams are stable and that you can presumably continue to get your uh, passive income over time. Also, the elective residency visa is valid for one year, but then it can be renewed for uh, one more year and every year um, from within Italy, every year after the first from within Italy. Um, and after five years, you are entitled to permanent residency. Now, to renew the elective residency visa, you have to maintain the income required by the law like i said the renewal is done in italy through the questura the local immigration office which will check if you have maintained your uh, passive income over that year so they may want to uh, get updated bank statements or uh, statements regarding your income to make sure that you continue to receive that income after five years you qualify for permanent residency so your residency in Italy will no longer be tied to your passive income. Uh, also, because like we said at the beginning of the video, the income required to apply for the elective residency visa is much higher. Also, because as we said at the beginning of the video, the income required to apply for the elective residency visa and maintain it is higher than the income that you need to live a comfortable life in Italy, at least for in a normal uh, situation and then after 10 years of course you are eligible to apply for Italian citizenship by residency and as a matter of fact the income required to apply for uh, citizenship by residency after 10 years of residency in Italy is much lower than the income required to apply for the elective like, residency visa in fact uh, the income required for the uh, citizenship through residency is only roughly 8,000 euros per person 
per year. Wow, that is a significant difference there. But I think also just for clarity's sake that uh, maybe there might be somebody out there who might be curious that once you're already a citizen of Italy, after you've gone through all these processes, then there would be no more requirement for you to have any particular number that you have to prove to stay in the country, correct? That is correct. And just also for clarification, so far we've really been focusing on people who are coming from outside of the European Union, correct? Correct. Of course, people who come from another EU countries and are citizens of that EU country, they don't need a visa to relocate to Italy. So to live in Italy as retirees, they don't really need anything. They just can move to Italy. They do have, though, to register as residents in an Italian municipality if they intend to stay in Italy for more than three months. And registering as resident, of course, comes with some benefits, meaning that you can uh, get a tax code, you can apply for an Italian ID, you can uh, use the Italian healthcare uh, system. Uh, though, of course, the situation is different for a non-EU citizen who is applying for the elective residency visa. Those individuals, they have to apply for a private insurance policy before they apply for the elective residency visa. And then uh, that needs to cover the whole stay for the first year. And then after the first year, they can pay basically to use the Italian healthcare system. Uh, and the payment, the, the, the annual payment is still much lower than than you know compared to an american health insurance so still you know uh, retiring in italy comes with many benefits regardless of whether you are an eu citizen or a non-eu citizen and since we are on the subject i think it's important to state for all of the people from the european union that are watching us that if they do want to move to italy there is no visa requirement but there is a minimum amount of money that people need to have either a mini very basic income or just some savings in the bank so something very informal that the municipality might ask you to show when you're registering as a resident just to make sure that you're that you have the most basic uh, income or um, savings to support yourself in italy while there is no visa required for EU citizens who want to retire in Italy or relocate to Italy, you might have to show some financial documents to show that you can support yourself in Italy when registering as a resident in an Italian municipality, which you are supposed to do if your intention is to stay in Italy for more than three months. Thank you, Marco. And one last topic that I know is going to be of major interest to many people who are going to be retiring to Italy. Will their pension be taxed in Italy? Of course, every situation is different and will need to be evaluated carefully uh, individually. But Italy does tax people who become uh, from a legal standpoint, tax residents of Italy, meaning people who are registered as residents in Italy or who spend more than 183 days in the country. However, there are plenty of initiatives, especially that we saw, especially recently, uh, from the government to heavily reduce taxation for uh, people who have a pension. I'm thinking about, for example, to the 7% tax regime that some Italian regions introduced. Thank you again, Marco, for explaining all of these details and telling us more about how things work in Italy. Of course, if anybody is interested in purchasing a property, renting a property and relocating to the country, how can they get in contact with you and your team? People can contact us through our website, italianrealestatelawyers.com, or give us a call. Our number is on the website. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, if anybody is interested in more information about Italian real estate, purchasing property, renting property, or where to purchase or rent that property in Italy, be sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel as well as the audio only podcast. But of course, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, that means you are also automatically subscribed to the Italian Citizenship Podcast, another project that Marco and I collaborate on, where we talk about some of the legal aspects of making Italy your home, as well as a lot of information about Italian citizenship. And if you're interested in more information about life abroad, living abroad, and the day-to-day -day little details, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rafael Di Furia, or you can also search for Not Your Average Globetrotter on Google, YouTube, or your favorite podcasting player of choice. But again, thank you so much, Mr. Marco Permunian from ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com for making yourself available for this episode. Of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and we will see you all next time. Later. Thank you.